prayer requests, please come to Buddy or, or anyone. Um, there is a, also in the lobby, you can sign up for prayer needs also. Also, it's a good time to point out um, our, pray, our pantry, not our, our prayer pantry, <laughs> no. <laughs> our pantry and our library, guys, um, it's underutilized. If anyone knows anyone that needs food, needs some help to get through the week, the month, or whatever, also, if they need some instruments, utilize that tool that we have available for not only us but for the public. Thirty, we are continuing to work on Revelation and it was really good last week. I don't know where Buddy went, but it was good. Where is the sign up for the free Bible? Anyone? On the bulletin board. don't get it okay <laughs> you guys will bow with me in prayer please our gracious heavenly father lord you're so good to us you take care of us above and beyond you could take it all away today lord and it would still be more than we ever deserved in our lifetime. Help us remember how fortunate we are. Lord, help us to give back to our church and our community. Help us with these tithes and offerings that they're pleasing to you. Please be with this service and those that could not make it. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, after you give your tithes and offerings, stand with us and, and uh, praise him as we sing, Stand in Your Love. Jesus, that 
that we know where to put our trust, where our trust lies, Lord Jesus, and just be with our country, Lord Jesus. I know that you're able just to put your hands over us, Lord Jesus. And Lord, be with Pastor Buddy as he brings us the word today that we will apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I agree with Buster. I'm telling you what, the band is doing great. We are so blessed. God is good. Amen. He's so good. Crazy week, huh? <laughs> Woo, crazy week. God is good. But you know, one thing we always know, and in this church we say it often, God is still on the throne, right? Amen. Amen. He is. Yes, let's clap. He is. Yeah. We better clap. <laughs> Oh, you know, there's always, even in the wake of, of bad things, there's always good news. And uh, your pastor is going to apologize to you for the last two weeks. Uh, and Rayla and Ben have been so good to me to give me grace and mercy that, uh, like God gives me every day, is I have not been able to, adva- to, uh, to announce their engagement. So can we give them a big hand? I promised Ben I wouldn't call him up or else they'd be up here right now in front of y'all. <laughs> but no, it's so good. You know, God just is always working in our lives and we're just so blessed uh, to be together. I love, I, I love church. I love being together. I was talking with someone today and we was just talking about the community that is church and, and what you miss out on if you don't come to church. And it's that, it's that feeling of God just, just being right there with you. It's his presence, right? As the Bible says, where two or more gathered, he is there also. And, and it's just great for those of you that are here with us. And for those of you that are watching online, we're very blessed to have you all there as well. One of these days, we're not going to have a virus anymore, right? It may be in heaven, but we're not going to have a virus anymore, and uh, we're going to be able to freely gather without concerns at all, and uh, that's good, right? And uh, what about any golfers here? Anybody hit a golf? Okay, good. We are, things just happen to all of us. But as Christians, I believe we experience the same thing. When we first come to Christ, it's the greatest experience ever, especially if you're a little older and, and make that commitment to Him. You know, we're transformed, gone with the old self, and we have this new creation in Him. Our, our sins are forgiven. We feel God's closeness there like never before. And then life kicks in. We continue to have those tendencies towards sin that we had before. However, we know we have God right there with us. Sometimes we don't feel that closeness as we did when we first came to the Lord. And we still get flat tires and dead batteries. We still have struggles and difficult times. Life just happens. But as we mature and grow, we know God didn't go anywhere. It's just part of being in a fallen world, in a sinful world, and our sinful natures. But through it all, what gets in our way is our emotions, our feelings, and the sin that we, our bodies, our nature wants to cling to. 
We have to train ourselves to not look at those sins the same way. We have to train ourselves to look away. We have to train ourselves to turn things off. We have to train ourselves to do these things. And only by growing in the Lord can we mature and know when to do those things. Sometimes I think we look to others and we just think, wow, they're such a steadfast rock of a Christian. But we don't realize that they've had to endure a few things, haven't they? They've had to experience life a little bit. They've had to, to grow in that. Now, last week, and I did not think this was going to turn into a sermon series, but it's going to, and I just sought the Lord so much in what we're going to do today, and it tacks on perfectly with what we learned last week about knowing God and knowing His absolute truth. Of course, the tagline or our sermon series is knowing, growing, and showing what we should do as Christians. And when we first talked about this several weeks ago in our new year and, and what we're going to go through as a Christian and as a church is that we need to mature in the Lord. We need to grow in Him. Not only do we need to know Him, but we've got to grow in Him. And that can only be done if we buckle down and we realize that we've got some work to do. And we're going to do that. We're going to go through Romans 12, 13, 14, and probably 15, verse by verse, and where it's going to take us a while to get through it. But I think there is so much good stuff to learn today. So today we are going to read the whole chapter 12. In just a minute, we're going to get there. But I think if you look around and, and if you've lived life for any time whatsoever, we realize that Satan likes to interfere with God's plan, does he not? Satan likes to get in the way. Think about it. Adam and Eve, he planted doubt. With Elijah, he brought fear. With Peter, he used pride. Satan plans for you and I. And as we grow in the Lord and we mature in him, we've got to realize that Satan isn't lazy. I'm going to repeat that. Satan isn't lazy. He works overtime. He works triple time. He works 24-7, eight days a week is what Satan does to try to derail us from what God's plan is for you and I. And only until we grow in the Lord do we know what to do and how to combat him, how to take him to task, if you will. It's already been done, actually. Christ has already done it, but we've got work we have to do. We have things that we need to do as Christ followers. You see, after we know God and we know his absolute truth, we have to grow in our relationship. However, it's not easy. It takes time. It takes discipline. I think we look around and, and we see these mighty prayer warriors and we see people that are just incredible. We don't think about the hours, hours, and hours they've spent upon their knees. We see these great men and women of faith and we don't realize all the trials that they had to go through to gain that. We want these things, yet we don't realize the work that comes into it. I found a little illustration, and I thought it was really good with today's message. And this is actually a message about success, but I, or an illustration about success, but I think we can use it the same way. Success is truly like an iceberg, and it's an illusion, right? We only see the great stuff on top. Think about it for just a minute. Think about our walk in the Lord. We only see people that walk in faith. We only see people that are mighty prayer warriors. But we don't realize that down below it took persistence. It, it took failure. They failed. We fail every day as Christians, as Christ followers. It takes sacrifice as well for us to, to be successful in the Lord. Disappointment. We're all going to be disappointed. It takes discipline, hard work, dedication. See, these are the things people don't see. What we see is just a mighty man or woman of God, but we don't realize the hours they put on their knees, the temptations, the trials that they've went through, the testimonies that they have to give others. See, we all want a testimony, but we all don't want to go through it because that means disappointment. That means heartache. That means hard things. But I believe you and I here today in this 2021 that we're going to be going through, we've got to buckle up because it's not over yet. Amen? But we know the one that remains constant. We know the one that remains consistent throughout it all. He is the one that is on the throne, the one that always has been, always will be. It's Jesus Christ. It's God. It's our Lord and Savior. And not only did he die for He is fully in us to help guide us. We're not alone down here on earth, and sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes when we're in the midst of that valley, we think, God, where did you go? And he's saying, I didn't go anywhere. One of my favorite poems is Footprints in the Sand, if you've ever read it, and I love it so much. 
And they've made memes and things on it. And I'm going to talk about that for just a second. But footprints in the sand is like, you know, well, the guy's walking along and he's talking to God and he sees two footprints, two sets of footprints. And then for a time, he only sees one. And he questions God. He says, well, where did you go? He said, I didn't go anywhere. Those were the times I was carrying you. Amen. And then the memes that we see on Facebook, you know, you see a set of tracks that are drug and and then you set a fee footprints that are walking and it's the times that he had to drag us through sometimes too right because that's what we do we're flesh sometimes he's got to drag us and we deserve to be dragged right he's got to drag us along through all the hard stuff but our sermon in a sentence today is simple and i think we'll all gain something from it when you start knowing you need to start growing when you start knowing, you need to start growing. We, we know God. We know his absolute truth. We talked about that last week. And when we know these things, what are you doing with it? If, if God gave you some seeds, right, or I gave you some seeds, some apple seeds or whatever, and they just stand in your hand, is anything going to take place? You've got to dig your dirt. You've got to stir your dirt a little, right? You've got to plant them. You've got to water them. See, we've got work to do as Christians. If we're going to grow and if we are going to be able to maintain against the craziness of this world, we've got work we've got to do. We've got to dig in. We've got to seek the Lord. And that's what we're going to be doing for however long God has us. In our walk with the Lord, how we mature with him. Because if, if you don't know Christ, if you don't know God, I pray that you do. But once you know him, what are you doing with that knowledge? I bought fire insurance. Sometimes so many of us do that, but in today's world, we've got to know. I don't know when, but God is coming and he's coming soon. And you watch the news or you watch anything, he is coming sooner than later. And we've got our work cut out for us. We've got to mature in the Lord so we can help others. Big purpose in his plan in this world. My question is, number one, have you found out what God has for you? And number two, are you doing what God has called you to do? So let's pray before we jump into Romans chapter 12. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just love you and we praise you, God, for everything. I thank you so much that we can freely gather, that we can worship you. Where, where two or more is gathered, Lord, you are there with us. You are, we are right here and, and you are right here with us. Doesn't matter if we're in this building, if we're in a car driving down the road, Father, you are there with us, and we thank you for that. You know our prayer request, you know our prayer list, and it's varied and it's deep. There's so many things going on that we just need your touch. And Lord, we lift these up to you, and yet we trust you with the answers, and however you answer. In whatever ways we trust you. I ask that you remove me from me today and that, that you speak freely from me. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, may I be anointed by your word, God, and, and by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we love you. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Romans 12, Romans chapter 12. Now, I don't have it up here for a reason. We are going to grow because I want you to bring your Bibles. I want you to bring your iPhones, your iPads, your Androids, whatever you got. And I want you to look it up. I want you to look it up. If you don't have a Bible, we have a great opportunity to get you a chronological one-year Bible that you will see how the Bible is pieced together. When you see Kings and Chronicles come together, it's like, wow, that thing. And it'll help you out. All right, I'm off my soapbox. Romans chapter 12. Now, Romans is considered one of the greatest theological documents ever written. One of the greatest theological documents ever written. We know Paul wrote this, and it was written to the church in Rome. This letter is to help Christians or Christ followers navigate the problems that come with living for Christ. That's what the whole letter is about. Romans is meant. Now, the cool thing about Romans is Paul sets it up perfectly. Chapters 1 through 11 is talks about what God did for you through Jesus Christ. 
How amazing it is that Christ died on the cross for our sins, for every single one of our sins. Again, I was talking this morning with somebody, and we're not going to realize just what, how amazing, just how wonderful it is, a thing that Christ did for us until we get to heaven. When we get to heaven and we see the amazingness, that is God, that is heaven, that he sent us, saved us for, from our sins, and we look down at hell and realize just how horrible it was, we're going to say, thank you, God. We're going to say, thank you, Jesus. And I think we're going to ask ourselves, did I do everything I did for the Lord with the time I had here on earth? Chapters 12 through 15, again, show the Christian how to grow in their relationship, and that's what we're going to be going through. And then chapter 16 is merely a greeting to his friends in and around the Church of Rome. Again, this is a letter written by Paul. We've broke it up into chapters and verses, but if you will, imagine the first manuscript as being a one-lettered object, just like a regular letter that you would write, we used to write, all right? We write emails now, right? Wait, we don't even do emails anymore. We text and tweet and do all kinds of stuff, right? It's just short stuff. All right, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Now, I want to say this before we get going. In the, in the King James, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, I beseech you, all right? I beseech you. It means, hey, pay attention, all right? I'm, I implore you. I'm begging you. Listen up, all right? Listen. Now, again, in verses, or excuse me, chapters 1 through 11 was about the great thing that Christ did for us. We need to pay attention. That has to be foremost in our thoughts when we read these things that Paul is telling us to do through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable, he being God. This is truly the way we worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by the changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation. body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. Verse 6, in His grace, God has given us different gifts. If you're a teacher, teach well. If you're a gift, is to encourage others. Be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good, love each other with genuine affection, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. And said, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Wow. Does that just blow your mind? And I did that on purpose because that's a lot of nuggets he's dropping our way, right? That is so many things. You're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Wow, that's incredible. Let me just pick a couple out. Bless those who persecute you. Are you serious, Paul? Never pay back evil with more evil? What? Feed your enemies when they're hungry? Are you serious? Don't just pretend to love others. You mean really love them? You see all these things that Paul is telling us to do? It's actually God telling us to do it through Paul's pinstrokes. 
man, that should just make your head want to explode, right? You might make hair grow on my head. You never know. That's a lot to take in. It is. That's why today we're only going to look at two verses, verses 1 and verses 2. 21 verses are amazing strategies that we can grow. Even if we just took these 21 verses and we tried to apply them all this year, I think we'd be better. I know we'd be better. It's what God wants us to do. It's what Christ died for, was for you and I to do the extreme opposite of what the world says, to do the extreme opposite of what social media says, to do the same exact opposite of what your flesh wants you to do. Think about that. Verse 1. And in this verse, we see Paul just set up the next chapters perfectly. He sets it all up. And it's set up for continual growth in the Lord. We all need to be continually growing in God and what he's done for us. Are you ready? Here we go. Verse 1. Buckle up. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. All he has done for you. You love me? She's like, oh, whatever. And I'm always telling her, I'll count the ways. I love you more than all the water in Table Rock. Or I love you more than all the cars on the highway, whatever it is. And I laugh at those. We laugh about that because it's trying to be funny. But if you think... Number one in the biggie we all go to is eternal salvation. What about every breath you take? What about every step you take? What about every every day you have on this earth is a gift. Every year we grow older is a gift from God. Because of all he has done for you. Next time you're having a bad day. Next time you're having one of them pity parties, and I have them often. Start counting the blessings. Start counting the ways in which God loves you and all the things he does for you every day because you got to be ready for the next part of this verse. Let them, talking about your bodies, be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. See, God wants us to do something. We cannot live like hell and expect heavenly blessings, can we? I mean, we can't, but some people do. Some people just say, to him because Paul qualifies it right here. This is truly the way to worship him. Think about how you want to worship God, how, how, how we worship him. We live a holy and sacrificial life. That's how you worship God, truly worship him. Now, contextually, let's go back. Sacrifices, again, during this time were considered holy in that the precious life of whatever animal it was, bird or cow or whatever it was, was taking the place of that sin. And, and it was taking the innocent blood of something in place of your sin. So we can do what God wants us to do. But we've got to give our bodies to God, our whole bodies. Let, let me explain this to you. So, say you have a thousand acres. Sell it. You want to keep the one right smack dab in the center of that thousand acres. By law, you have to have what they call right away. The new owner has to grant you right away to that one little acre square in the center of those thousand acres. And you can access your one acre any time, day or night. He cannot withhold you from that. As Christians, if we don't fully surrender our whole selves to God, do you really? And he's going to come and visit you as often as he can. If you don't fully give every area of your life to God, we all have to do that. We have to completely give ourselves to God. Invite him in. We have to invite him into our finances. We have to invite him into our marriages. We have to invite him into We have to intentionally say, God, I'm giving you my life. I'm intentionally giving you every part of me. I'm not going to hold anything back from you. I'm going to give it all to you.
Anytime your husband or wife wants to see your phone, you hand it over. They can scroll through your apps, your texts, your emails, whatever you got, right? Let me ask you something. If God said, hand me over your life, could he scroll through and know that you've given him every area of your life? Of our life, and not only give it to him, but be intentional about giving it to him. Intentionally give him time to read, study, and apply the word of God into our lives. Intentionally give when the time comes. Intentionally do what God has called us to do, not just on Sundays. Not just when the plate comes around, you throw five bucks in there. And I can say that because that used to be me. I didn't take God's word seriously. I didn't take tithing to what it is. I, I didn't take God's time seriously, and I'd read a few sentences and go on down the road about my day. I might throw up a quick prayer to God. All right, God, be with my family. But as I reflect back, I look on those, and they were selfish prayers. They was trying to take God's will and bend them down, conform them to me. Not take me and conform them to God. And again, I believe that comes with maturity. As we grow in the Lord, we know that no matter what we can do, it's never good enough. No matter how holy we try to be, it's never holy enough to God. But we got to keep trying. We got to keep trying. That's, that's what we do in life. We just got to keep trying. And we know this by growing in the Lord and surrendering ourselves every day intentionally to Him. I love what Paul says to the church in Galatia, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 21. It says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer. I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless, for if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Can I ask you something? Do you die to yourself daily? Do you wake up and say, this is what I'm going to do today, Lord, and I want your prayers and blessings on me. Or do you wake up and say, God, what would you have me to do today? See, we have two choices we make, and every day we make those two choices. We're either trying to bend God and rope him down our way, or we're trying to say, God, whatever you'd have me to do, you. Whatever. Can I tell you something? It's okay. God is not going to withhold anything from us that's But we have to intentionally Know what he wants us to do. And it goes back to knowing absolute truth by knowing the word of God. Not only just reading it, but applying it and studying it to our lives. And saying, God, what... When we do this, he does something very amazing. He transforms us. He transforms us. We become a new person in him. Brand new. Gone with is the old. You need to start growing. Otherwise, you're just spinning your wheels. Let's look at the second part of this. See, we don't conform. We transform. Think about that. We don't conform. We transform. God makes us new. He makes us to where we look at situations, Lou, where, where we look at circumstances in a new way, where we are able to handle those and look at them in a completely different way. In verse 2, Paul qualifies verse 1 by stating what happens when one gives every area of their life to him. It transforms them. Let's read it. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. To a new person by changing the way you think. It's pretty amazing. If we know what God wants us to do, it's going to transform us. We're not going to think the Now, I'm an 80s kid. I grew up in the 80s, and I love the 80s. Now, I know we know who the Transformers are, right? 
You know what Transformers are? Now, I'm not, now, your Transformers are really cool. You guys got some really great graphics and things. I'm talking the old school Generation 1 Transformers, right? Anybody know what the opposite was of the Transformers back in the day, the generic versions of the Transformers? It's the ones I could afford growing up. Were they called the GoBots, I think it was? They were like the generic version. They weren't as cool. You know, we didn't have Optimus Prime and all this stuff, you know. But, but the, the, the cool thing about those is you would have a truck or a semi or whatever it was, and, and you couldn't tell what it was going to transform into. But it did when it wanted to. It trans- I mean, Optimus Prime was a semi, and he turned it into Optimus Prime. The dude's awesome, right? You agree with me, Balin? It's like, yeah. <laughs> but that's what was so cool about it. The yellow bug, I can't remember his name offhand, but it turned into something. Bumblebee, is that right? Yeah, well, I'm getting it. All right, it's coming back. And they would transform from a car into a cool robot thing. You and I are the same way if we'll allow God to use us in that way. He will completely change us. But you know what? He wants something from us. You know, we've got to be putty in his hand. Think about that. If, if you're hard like a rock, can God do anything with you? No. You're, you're just going to still be you, right? For. He's made us all for something. We all have a ministry. Every single one of us was created by God to do this. Now, here's the mess up part, and here's where we mess up really bad. All right, We take detours. We make choices, right? And we have to live with those choices. You ever made a bad choice in your life? Sometimes you make a bad choice and go into dinner, right? You, sh- you ordered the chicken instead of the steak or whatever it is. I wanted to be a supercross mechanic. That's what I wanted to do. That's what Buddy wanted to do. He wanted to turn wrenches, and he wanted to be the cool dude at the supercross races, spinning wrenches on, on, on the racer's bikes. That's what I wanted to do, right? I mean, that was my dream. I thought, man, if I can do that, whoo. I've made it. And then I got serious about the Lord. And then I started maturing and growing in the Lord. And I quit saying, God, that's what I want to do. I started saying, God, what would you have me to do? And I prayed the most dangerous prayer a Christian can ever pray. You want to know what it is? God, use me. Because you know what? He will. But you've got to be serious about it. You've got to say, all right, God, I I prayed this prayer. And he's going to say, all right. He's going to give you opportunities. What are you doing with those opportunities? Are you taking them seriously, or are you sloughing them off? Even if it means looking like a fool sometimes. Because sometimes we don't always get it right, do we, for the Lord? Sometimes we're just scared. Sometimes we're just nervous. Sometimes we just mess it up. But if you pray, God, I'll do whatever you want. God, I'll go wherever you want. Can I tell you something? He'll take you places. You'll say things. You'll do things that you never thought imaginable. But you've got to be willing to do it. But you're not going to do it by copying the behavior and custom. Against the grain, upside down and inside out to what the world says to do. If you want to live the life God has called you to do, you are going to have to go against what the world says is cool. You're going to have to change the way you think and say, God, may your will be done in my life, not mine. You're going to get persecuted. You're going to do things you don't want to do. You are going to miss out on a few things. You think you will. But when we fully give ourselves to God every area and we remain like putty in his hands... Back 15 years later, and you'll think, wow, God has used me in this way. I've said these things. I've done these things, and it's all for the glory of God, and we've got to keep that up. See where the problem is and where we miss the boat at is, is we try it. We try things for the Lord, do we not? And then it gets boring. We volunteer to do things, and then what happens at church, right? But it's hard work. It's easier to stay home or whatever than it is to come to church. It's, it's, it's easier to not do what you say you would do than it is to keep coming up over and over and over again. It's like getting the door shut on you time after time. And it gets disheartening. I'm telling you right now, it's hard. God wants your availability, not your ability. Do you realize he'll supply you with that? 
He just wants you to be available. He wants you to say, when you're going to do something, you're going to do it. And you keep showing up, and you keep doing it, and you keep trying, and he will bless you. But you have got to make that choice. What are you going to do? Are you doing what you want to do? things however you got to do your part you've got to do what god wants you to do and it starts by not copying the behavior and the customs of this world proverbs 3 5 and 6 proverbs 3 5 and 6 says this trust in the lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take he will show you but you've got to trust him you know, God, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm teaching this class and nobody's showing up. You know, God, I'm teaching this class and nobody's showing up. You know, God, I'm teaching this class and nobody's showing up. Can I tell you something? Keep showing up. Keep being faithful and God will do what he wants you to do. Maybe he's testing you. You think about that? Maybe he's testing you. He's saying, you know what? Is he or she going to keep showing up? Is he or she going to keep doing what I've asked him to do? You know what? I've got to grow you. I've got to grow you. you. You know, but you've got to grow, right? We, again, we see these people that are pastoring these large churches. We see youth pastors that have phenomenal turnouts. We see teachers of Sunday school. I'm not going to give up until the good Lord shuts the door. I'm going to keep trying every day, every Sunday, every Wednesday to be the best buddy that I can be, but never lose sight of what God has for me and be sensitive to that. And we've got to keep showing up. We've got to keep doing what God has called us to do because we trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We do not depend on our own understanding. We seek his will and all we do, we, he will show you which path to take. I love this. I have people come to me and they'll say, I want to do this, I want to do that. All right, what do you want to do? Well, I don't know. Help me. Well, I don't know what your gifts. Tell you what, why don't you try something? If it works, great. If it doesn't, try something else. Try, try again, right? Isn't that what they say? Keep trying, but don't give up. That's what Satan wants us to do. He effectiveness right now. 50 to 75% of pastors every week are quitting their jobs. Number one, people are not showing up because of COVID. Now, again, we can't, man, it's, it's real. We got to be mindful of that. But two, it's because of being disheartened every week, looking out into the crowd and seeing one or two, three, four, five people, right? Looking on social media and only seeing 10 people on there. We got to keep it up. We are living in a time where we have got to keep on keeping on. We've got to keep grinding. We've got to be like that iceberg. We can't give up because that's what Satan wants us to do. He has called you to do something. He's called me to do something. And we've got to keep after it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. We keep our, we keep our nose to the books and just keep on grinding through. We just got to keep on keeping on. Remember, when you start knowing, you need to start. We have eternal life, and, and again, I think we, we don't realize what it is enough. But we have relationship with God. We can go directly to Him in our prayers and our needs, whatever we need. We have complete access to God at any time, day or night complete access to our father the one who made the heavens and the earth we can access him any time and what we do with what he's given us is completely up to you see he's given you everything you need you've just got to be like putty you've got to not conform to the world and you've got to be willing to keep grinding you've got to be willing to keep going that's what god wants for us to do he wants us to keep studying his word he wants us to keep growing in him and it starts and ends with you surrendering every area of your life and giving God access to all of it. Every single area of your life. Every single area of your life. Anybody here on TikTok? I'm going to go there real quick. Thank you. That's an that's a honest hand. I am too. All right? I'll be honest with you. So is Christy. <laughs> she shot her hand up right there. We have TikTok warders at, at night. You know, We're like, whose volume can we go up the loudest? And I think about that sometimes. If I wouldn't spend 35, 40 minutes on TikTok, 
And I'd put it down and pick up a Bible or, you know, and I do read the Bible every day, don't get me wrong. Or if I pick up something else, man, I, that's 30, 45 minutes of something else I could be ingesting into my life. That would be so much more worthwhile than TikTok. I'm just being real right now with you. That's something I'm going to work on this year. Now, if I get my time in and I want to TikTok for a while, that's fine, you know. Are you sitting there thinking, I ought to not be doing this? Or are you going to stop, put the phone down, pick up that book or that Bible or whatever it is and start doing something that God has called you to do, that he wants you to do? Remember, this gift of relationship is something that is amazing. It will transform us. It will strengthen us. But we've got to do what God has called us to do, and we've got to act. We've got to act. We're going to have the band come, and I'm going to close with a little story, and then we're going to take a few minutes to do an altar call like we always do. Queen Mary Tech was the queen mother, right, of England. She traveled so often. The Queen Mary out in California is a big old boat that they named it after because she liked to travel so much. She would go there and uh, she actually went there so much that she wouldn't even need her royal guards. She could go and freely walk. The people loved her and she often interacted with them so many times. True story, one time she was there and it started to rain. And she thought, you know what? I wonder if somebody would have let me borrow an umbrella. So she knocked on this random person's door, and this lady come to the door, and she said, can I borrow an umbrella? And this lady thought, who are you? She said, hold on just a sec. She went and got the rattiest, tattiest umbrella that she could, and she said, yeah, here you go. Queen Mary Tech said, thank you very much. I'll have it back for you tomorrow. The lady shut the door and thought, what a weirdo. Very next day, Queen Mother, Queen Mary. This woman started instantly crying and said, You know what? I missed out on an opportunity. I could have done so much more for her. Can I ask you something, church? What are you going to do when you stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you realize just how many opportunities that you missed out on by serving Him? That's what we ought to be thinking about. Not how can God serve me today, but how can I serve you? If you would, we're going to stand. We're going to sing a few courses. The altars are open. If there's anything on your heart and you want a prayer, I just come down. If you want someone to pray with you, grab them by their hands or maybe just pray right where you're at. Whatever you're going through, whatever's going on, and we're all going through something. Take a few moments and just reflect as the band sings. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king.
gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. Never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. Cause you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good. Let the king of my heart be the wind, <laughs> the anchor of my way. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my Sing it with us. Song. Father, we just love you, God, and we're just truly blessed to be with you. Father, you are with us, but Lord, we choose to be with you in the things we do each and every day. Father, I thank you so much for this amazing letter from Paul. I thank you so much how it's not only going to grow us this year, but Lord, we're going to know what you want us to do. We're going to know, God, what to do when times are in trouble. Father, as we dive into your word every day, we're going to watch the news and we're going to say, you know what? It doesn't matter. God's on the throne. We're not going to get scared, Father. We're not going to get anxious because you are God. Father, we are going to continue not only to do it as individuals, as individuals, as individuals, but we're going to do it, Father, as a church, as a corporate body, Lord. And we're not just going to do it on Sundays or Wednesdays. We're going to do it Monday. We're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. God, we're going to seek you every day of our life. We're going to be prayed of this year. 2021 is going to be one of the greatest years for spiritual growth in this church and as us as individuals, for those watching with us online, for those worshiping with us at home. God, I know you're going to grow us, but we've got our work to do. We've got to remain like putty in your hands, God. We've got to say, you know what? It's not my will, but your will be done in my life. Father, I ask that you be with the hearts here today. Lord, we look on the outside, but you know the heart. You see inside. You see exactly what we're struggling with, exactly what we're going through, getting ready to go through. Father, I just ask, Lord, that you just help us to know you're right there. Help us to realize that, that you don't go anywhere, God. It's our emotions and our feelings that make us feel like you went so far, but you didn't. You're right there, God. I ask that you transform us, Lord. I ask that you help us not to copy the behavior and the customs of this world. That we stand up for you when we need to stand up, God. That we put you first and foremost in our lives. That you just help us to be the Christians that you called us to be. Every single one of us. Father, bless us as we go out today. Keep us safe. Lord, help us to have church tomorrow. Help us to have church Tuesday. Help us to have church Wednesday, God. Help us to have church wherever two or more are gathered. 
We love you, God, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with God. Have an amazing day. May he guide you and keep you in all things. Amen.